Hey all, John here. Um, welcome back. It's been a couple weeks. Um, I just finished moving to a new place, so I'm going to give you guys an updated overview of my server rack. Um, so I finally bought a rack because um, I was moving, and I got a um, Protectly box to run PFSense. Um, first it was PFSense, then it turned into OpenSense, and then I think I used this for about a week, and then I realized, hey, um, after I did a power outage by accident. Um, it reset my WAN to from priority one to 255 and I didn't have internet. It took me about 20 minutes to figure out why the internet was out because I'm like, it's getting an IP address. What the fuck is the problem? Um, and then I was like, you know what? One of my buddies um, has a dream machine. He loves it. I said I was never gonna buy a dream machine. And I said, you know what? I just wanted to work. So I got a dream machine um, and that has replaced this. I'm proud he's gonna return this back to protect Lee. Um, but, um, could have argued that I could have just gotten a PFSense device, um, and instead of running OpenSense, but I, I want open source gear when I can find it. Um, um, this even has core boot on it. So, um, but yeah, I, I do like tinkering, um, a lot, but at the same time, if there's a power outage, I shouldn't have to worry about fixing things that, you know, because everything else in the rack came back online. But yeah, I'll give you guys a quick tour of what that looks like, um, the rack and what's in it, what I use, what I don't use, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the rack. Um, I got this on Amazon for about, what was it, 80 bucks. Um, we're going to start at the top. Um, it's very, very fresh, uh, so <laughs> please excuse the mess. Um, but yeah, starting at the top, so we still have the same Optiplex 7050. Um, running my XEPNG. Um, it's just a single node right now. Um, I upgraded the AP to the U6 Plus. I had the U6 Lite before. Um, speeds have been good. Um, and yeah, and then in the back we have basically the uh, Philips Hue Bridge, same as before. It's only running like two bulbs now, so nothing crazy. And then we have the Unify Flex. Uh, it's powered by PoE all the way in the back there. That goes from um, one of the switches here and into this machine. Of course, the Hue Bridge. And that's about it. So nothing really going on there. Um, the new core of the network is, of course, the Dream Machine Pro. So um, I um, am using this to replace the, um, what was it? The uh, Protectly OpenSense machine. Um, my new apartment um they have a couple of fiber connections coming in i think they have a couple of 10 gig circuits um i forget how many units there are in this building uh, it's like 20 something floors um but yeah i get about 900 up and then i think 600 down on average but of course they always guarantee at least a, min a minimum of 200 200 um so of course i have my wan connection coming out of the wall going straight into the dream machine and then, of course, the Dream Machine, uh, this is the Dream Machine Pro, not the SE. So, I have one patch cable going from here into the USW16 PoE switch. And then, of course, the first port is powering the U6 Plus um, access point. And I have a couple other cables just going around. These are all one gig. Um, my future plan uh, for the Dream Machine um, also. Um, I'm not running Unified Protect, but I had an extra 4 terabyte drive, so I made sure to put that in there. Um, I don't know what that's going to be used for, but it's just in there, because why not? But my future plan for the Dream Machine is to use these SFP Plus links. Um, these are here, and I'm thinking of using as a mini 10GIG um, switch. So I'm thinking I will put in probably a 10GIG, uh, um, what is it called? A 10GIG a SFP Plus um, NIC into the 7820 connect that here and then do um, an SFP plus the RJ45 transceiver and have that have the Mac connect over the NIC that I have over Thunderbolt. Um, but yeah, so Dream Machine Pro USW16, um, of course it's pretty empty. I could have just gotten away with just getting an, a Dream Machine SE and returning this, but I already had this and it's out of the return period. So no luck there. Um, I have a storage shelf, this random stuff. This is not bolted in, um, just screwdrivers and random stuff that's there um i have uh, 3850 switches i don't use these these are just here they look pretty honestly i don't really have a use for layer three right now but and when the time comes and i want to learn uh, for my ccna or something they are here and then of course the server that has always been here the precision 7020 
with the Xeon Gold. This has been in uh, a couple videos. Um, it's running TrueNAS scale. Um, Xeon Gold, 64 gigs of yeah, 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, has a 10 gig NIC in it. Um, four uh, 14 terabytes. Um, so you get Excel drives, and then I have four NVMe drives in the back. Those handle my video editing over the 10 gig network, and of course, um, that all has been working well. I've been using this for I think at least I think it's I think it's at least six seven months, oh, probably way longer. I've lost track, but I know I've had it since I bought my condo. Um, just the current form of it has changed so many times with the processor upgrades. Um, I part of me wants to buy an R540 just to use for virtualization. But now, my main workstation that you guys have seen in some of my videos, I'm going to be virtualizing that and using this as an XCPNG host because that's faster and I already have it without having to spend money. So this has a 12700K in it, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, which is probably going to go up. It's probably going to upgrade to 128 gigs. It has a 10 gig NIC. I have at least three NVMe drives in there, no, no spinning drives. Um, and then I have an AMD GPU in there. So I'm thinking... And virtualize my Fedora VM and virtualize my Windows VM um, and just run it that way instead of just restarting it. Because honestly, I don't use this PC unless I'm editing something. And I'd probably be able to edit it straight from the Mac if I can. Um, but yeah, um, this is the PF Sense box here um, that is being returned most likely. I just don't have a use for it right now. Um, the Mac is connected over 10 gig with this, I forget what brand this is, this OWC um i'll probably do a, a note there but yeah it's an OWC. um i think a thunderbolt 4 uh, thunderbolt 3 not thunderbolt 4 adapter that's connected uh, using a, st a static ip map to the um true nas scale server i would like to have that just be on the network so I'll be doing rj45 uh, sfp plus to rj45 soon and yeah um that's the rack um, i'm currently building um, this is running OpenWRT right now. Um, this is going to be for basically edge, um, the remote location. Um, but I'm probably just going to go with Unified Express when that goes back in stock. I would like to have a site-to-site -site VPN between um, my apartment, the remote location, and my parents' house. Um, so they can all access my file server, probably through WireGuard. That will be our site-to-site. -site. Um, that's my plan there. And then, of course, I have a couple uh, SATA drives that I'm not using. They're just sitting... But yeah, um, that is the rack as of right now. Things are always expanding. I'm probably going to buy an R540 just throw it in there just for just for fun to see how it goes. But yeah, um, I'm going to show you my unified dashboard now just so you get an idea of what my network looks like. And we'll go from there. Alrighty, welcome to my dream machine. Um, this is what the unified console looks like for me. Um, I'm just going to show you guys this a top, topology map. Of course, I have all the options on. Um, but you can see how, how it works. Um, so, of course, I have my ISP coming in. Um, I have a private IP address, which makes me mad. Um, but nothing I can do about that. Um, the UDM, the PoE switch, and then I have a couple devices. So, the U6 Plus, and then some other stuff. This is kind of messy right now with the, uh, the map. But you get the idea of how this works and where everything is. It's really cool to see. Um, unified devices, stuff like that, everything I have connected. Um, it's very, very seamless. Everything is under basically one website. Um, it's kind of cool to see. Um, but yeah, um, I don't have much to say about this UI other than the fact that it's really seamless. I'm still learning how to do VLANs. I'm thinking about setting up a basically a, your untagged uh, main um, network. Um, your management VLAN, a guest one for the Wi-Fi, um, for the, the a guest network um, that would be tied to my um, Quentin family main um, SSID. I'm just playing around with that. I'm just learning. Uh, I know this Ubiquity and Unify in general just simplifies a lot of stuff, which is cool, but it's a learning process. This is a home lab. It's not supposed to be a super uh, complex enterprise environment. Um, and yeah. I don't really have much to say. This um, site to site VPN is good in theory, but I need to have someone that has an IP, a public IP address. So I will probably use one of my uh, parents' um, addresses. So once I get them a Unify Express and just do a site to site with them. Um, but yeah, it's very seamless, very, very simple, nice interface. This is why I avoided it. But honestly, if it just works, why not? Um, nothing really crazy about this. It, it just works. And, 
Um, the uh, IDPS, um, I honestly don't really care much about it because it's just me. Um, I know Sync Thing has been having some issues um, with it because it's it's using relay servers all over the world because I don't have a public IP address. Um, and Unify detects that and it's like, oh, why are you talking to France? Why are you talking to Germany? Why are you talking to Russia? Stuff like that. But all in that, I haven't had any real issues with it. It's been pretty smooth. Um, now I'm going to connect over to my OpenSense um, on the Protect Lee and I'll show you how much more complicated it is. So give me a, a little bit. I got to get this online and we'll go from there. There it is. So this is what um, OpenSense looks like. Um, the interface is a lot nicer than PFSense. Um, but as you can see, there is a lot more going on. I wish I waited to reset this before um, I recorded it to show you guys, but there's a lot of stuff going on. I think the main thing that I was struggling to, to set up was the firewall rules. Um, I basically have a couple um, virtual machines I don't want to have access to the internet because let's be honest, a OneNote virtual machine that has a, a journal, um, basically, a, how do I say this? I have a VM that I use just to journal about my day. I don't need that in Solar Windows updates because it just needs access to the LAN so it can write to the NAS. Um, I was having a lot of issues setting up a rule. Um, I think that's just because of the, um, I think there's that ma there's a master rule that passes everything. And I didn't want to, I, I didn't really know how to really set that up the right way. So I just, it just didn't work. So I think my workaround was to set up a fake gateway of like a 1.50 address that was basically a dead zone. So it wouldn't have internet access, but that's that's not the right way to do security. So, um, and then when I had a, basically I was doing some server maintenance, I accidentally turned off the power. And when it came back online, I had my, uh, what is it called? My WAN, if I can find it in here, uh, let's see, not that way. Uh, where's my gateway? Um, yep, gateways. This, um, it set to 254 now, but uh, I also have tail scale in here before I reset it. And it would set it to the lowest priority ever. And I think it was trying to force all the WAN traffic through tail scale, which doesn't make sense. Um, it's because it's trying to use tail scale for the site to site. And of course that was never set up. Um, and then from there, just I just didn't have an internet connection. So I had to change this for 254 priority to one and then I had my internet back. I don't know if that's normal if I or if I'm tripping. Um, someone can leave a comment explaining how this works. But the main problem I had with this was the internet went down for 20 minutes. And if I'm remote, I cannot fix that. Um, I just I want this to be part of a site to site VPN. But if I don't have the confidence of setting this up here, what about in a different country that doesn't it, it just doesn't sit right with me that oh i could lose access to something yes you should have your your firewall connected to what to a um ups but again if the internet goes down for any reason I, I want to be able to fix it you know what i mean or it should have a way to reboot on its own and fix itself it seems like unify can do that like it's i i'm still learning a lot about this networking stuff but uh, that is my experience with OpenSense. If I can find a way to make this work and be more stable, I will definitely keep it and return the UDM because honestly, I don't need a UDM when I'm just doing stuff at home and it has the Unify Protect and the Unify Access, all this other stuff that is just extra. But yeah, um, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next one.